Sometimes it's hard to know what's true and what's false when it comes to STDs. This includes HPV or the human papillomavirus. Maybe you've heard that it affects all different parts of the body. True and that it's one of the most common viruses out there. Also true. And it's also true that HPV causes cancer. How exactly does that happen? I had to know more. So I visited my friends at the Cleveland Clinic and just look at all this information they gave me. That's a lot to sort through. And to talk me through it is Dr. Zanotti. She's a real life medical expert and is giving us the lowdown on everything HPV. I'm Tori and this is the TMI Show. So what's up with HPV? It's one of the most common STDs. About 79 million Americans are currently infected, and about 14 million more people become infected each year. According to the CDC, it's estimated that almost everyone who's sexually active will end up with at least one strain of HPV at some point. In many cases, HPV causes no symptoms. When they do occur, the most common symptom is warts in the genital area. Symptoms can appear weeks, months, or even years after the person's been infected. There are about 100 different types of HPV. 14 of them are considered high risk for leading to cervical cancer. And two strains, HPV 16 and 18, are responsible for about 70% of all cervical cancers. Some strains cause warts, but not cancer, and some strains cause no problems at all. Now that's a lot to think about, so let's talk through it with our expert, Dr. Zanotti. Hey, Dr. Zanotti, thanks for joining us. Hi, my name's Selena Zanotti, and I'm a OBGYN provider at the Cleveland Clinic. Thanks for having me. So if HPV is so common that seemingly everyone has it, why is it so important to prevent it? You know, it's it's important to prevent it for several reasons. And like you've mentioned, there's a couple of different, there are many different types of HPV. There are the ones that cause genital warts, which are not life threatening, but that can be quite devastating to a woman and to a man if they do get them. You know, it's embarrassing. They can be uncomfortable. Um, they may require you to go get, you know, different treatments for them. And it's something you may deal with for the rest of your life. We unfortunately do not have a way to clear HPV in everybody. Then you mentioned the high risk HPVs and that's what we're really concerned about because we do know that the majority of cervical cancers are caused by a strain of HPV. We also know that HPV is linked to throat cancers and anal cancers as well. And so that's why this is so important because this is truly a preventable cancer. You know, and the other reason it's important to prevent HPV is because a lot of the treatments that we use for it might affect you when you're pregnant. You know, and we want you to be the healthiest you can be before you're pregnant, and we want to prevent any complications. And a lot of women who have HPV have to go through procedures that may increase their pregnancy risk. All right, so what's the best way to prevent HPV? Yeah, you know, the best way to prevent HPV is to practice safe sex practices. You know, and you want to minimize the amount of partners you have. Um, Definitely use condoms with a new partner. But without a doubt, the HPV vaccine has been phenomenal in preventing women and men from acquiring this virus. Um, it's been approved since 2006 and been given to millions and millions of girls and boys safely and has been very effective in preventing acquisition of HPV and then all the problems that come with it. And who should get tested for HPV? So when women come in for their annual GYN exam, either with a OBGYN or with their family practice provider, you know, they'll start getting pap smears after age 21. Um, we don't automatically test for HPV until you are 30, um, because we know a lot of young people, if they get HPV, their immune systems are strong, they'll tend to clear it. So if a girl or woman has an abnormal pap smear, she may get HPV testing. Otherwise, we just test for the high risk ones starting at age 30. Okay, let's say I get tested and the results come back positive. What now? So, you know, you have to look at the whole picture. So if someone's HPV test comes back positive for one of the high risk ones, we look at what their pap smear is. Cause the pap smear is actually looking at the cells from the cervix and it's a combination of both. If they're abnormal, we do another procedure called a colposcopy where we take a good look at a girl's or woman's cervix to make sure there are no abnormal areas. A woman might go through some biopsies um, to make sure there aren't any precancerous changes. And of course, we wanna make sure there's no cervical cancer. Is there anything else people should know about the human papillomavirus? So, you know, one of the things women can do is getting that vaccine and 
Also, parents can make sure their girls are getting the vaccine and that their boys are getting the vaccine. You know, they can start getting it, you know, when they're young and school age, and you definitely want them to get it before they're sexually active. Number two, trying to be as healthy as you can. You know, making sure you're not smoking, because we know smokers do have a higher risk of HPV causing precancerous changes or cervical cancer. We also know if you get other STDs or sexually transmitted diseases, it increases your risk for HPV being more active. So trying to be as healthy as you can, having a strong immune system, those are important things to do. Thanks for talking with us, Dr. Zanotti. Thank you very much for having me. And if you want more information, please look at the Cleveland Clinic website or talk to your provider. Got a TMI sex question or just want a complicated medical topic made a little bit more understandable? Just drop it in the comments and like and subscribe so you don't miss an episode of the TMI show. Thanks for watching.